Welcome back to the channel. Christmas is two months away. That's a long way away, but it's not so long away, away in terms of a Christmas project that people will have time to make. A week before Halloween is a good time to start doing this because it's going to be a multi-video series here because I'm going to have people do, if you want to, nativity set, right? So I got the Virgin Mary for this video here, and then we'll do uh, we'll do Joseph and we'll do baby Jesus, and maybe we'll do some other characters. I'm definitely going to do the Three Kings, so it's definitely going to be at least a five-piece set, but we might do some animals as well. So and it's all going to be like in one playlist, so it's easy to, to get a hold of and find and easy to do. But that's going to take time to put out, and it's going to take time for you to work on because there'll be a lot of pieces. So this is kind of like a, a larger project, which is why I'm starting it a week prior to Halloween, October 31st, so I can try to do at least one video on this a week and then keep putting it out, and you've got time to do it and then make before Christmas an entire nativity set. One, maybe two, depending on if you want to give gifts. So that's what we're doing today. Let's take a look at the money shots so you can see these figures up close. And there they are. Like a lot of the videos I've done recently, I'm going to do two different videos, one for carving and one for painting and finishing. And in the finishing video, you'll be able to see us do one with dance oil and wax, and the other one will paint up and use a BLO antiquing mix. So if you want to see that and how we finish them up, watch the second video. We're going to start with a single block of wood. It is four inches long and inch and a half by inch and a half. You can absolutely do this on a two inch block or a one inch block, whatever you'd like to, just adjust the sizes accordingly. I'm going to be using a rough out knife and a detail knife for this. You don't have to have both. You could just do it with one. You could do it with just a detail knife. You could do it with just a rough out knife. It is uh, up to you. If you're doing using it with just a rough out knife, you're just going to be choking up in the blade a little bit more when you go to the detail work, which is not that hard. And then uh, there's, there's one spot on here. I'm going to show you how much easier your life would be if you had a skew to do it, to do some work with, because right when you get up into this section here, having a skew be able to smooth that plane out is just a godsend. You can do it with a knife, but a skew will make your life a little bit easier. So if you've got one and you haven't been using it, I'm going to show you a way to make use of that today. All right. So we're going to start off with getting our measurements right. So we're going to come down an inch and a quarter, and that's going to be where the top of our head's going to go. And we're going to take that line all the way around. For those of you who need to have lines, there you go. Right there. Now next, we're going to put a center line down the middle of our carving. Top to bottom, for those who need it. That's what this is here for. Some of us need that to help keep ourselves centered, and if that's what you need, you go ahead and put that on there, top to bottom, and that's what we got. Okay. Now I'm going to use my rough out knife and just take all these hard corners off real quick. We don't need all of this wood. And I always find it easier when I'm carving not have all those hard corners there poking into my hands. It's just uh, nicer to hold a carving that doesn't have that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start taking off the left and right side of the head. We're going to use that straight line as being our center plane. So that's going to be our face. That's going to be the back of our head. Left side, right side of the head. So I'm just going to start curving in and up. And for those of you wondering why I'm carving off on this side of the screen, you probably see by now, we got that overlay up on the left hand side. That is the finished carving that we're doing now. It's not the carving over there. It's the one we're actually working on. I like doing that because I feel like it gives people a good guide on what cuts I'm doing and what, what they see getting done because they can see this is how it turned out. This is what we actually went for in this carving video and how it worked out. I like having that up there. So. Hopefully you do as well. Now I'm not going to go too deep here. And I'm just bringing this plane in, going into the side, out to the top, and kind of curving it. Slow slope. Nothing crazy. And you can see that right there, right? We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Slow slope. In at about where that line is, and out of the top. 
and you don't have to go the whole length. Notice that I'm not going the entire length of this. That's too much work. I go and angle it, and I take a little bit off one side, a little bit off the other, a little bit off the middle, a little bit off one side. Not doing the whole length at once compared to where I'm at. Okay, I need to keep going. Just make sure you keep that plane relatively even. And you can look at the top, compare it to that center line if you need to do so to make sure you are keeping it even. There we go. For those of you watching this video live, I am going to be on the International Association of Wood Carvers this Saturday. So if you are so inclined, please feel free to join that Zoom meeting and come see me, support me. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you're not so inclined or if you're seeing this after November 2nd, 2024, then you can head over to their website or head over to the YouTube channel and you'll be able to check out that video and see what all I went over. But if you want to come, you can ask me questions live in the meeting and uh, I'll answer them live if you have any questions that is that you haven't already asked in the comments. You guys are pretty good about asking questions in the comments, so I really appreciate that. If you give me questions, I can give you answers. And if you notice down there, I do reply to most all of the comments. I don't, I try not to leave any comments unanswered. I think that's getting pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty appropriate. Nothing crazy. So we have a little bit of slope there on the left and right sides, and uh, it's pretty even, a little bit off. We can correct it a little bit. All right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just be close, you know? Just a wood card, nothing crazy. All right, now we're going to work on, you know, whichever side can be the front at this point. You can change it around. It doesn't have to be one side or the other. So let's go ahead and say that this is the back. So we're going to take that corner off, this corner off as well. Just start rounding that off, right? And then we're going to do the same thing here in the middle. Start bringing the head forward a bit. And then that corner again. And then that corner again. Now, why do we do this corner and this corner first before we did the middle, if we're just going to redo those corners? Because by doing those corners, we made that middle easier to cut because there was less wood there, right? Little things like that can just make your life a whole lot easier. So, something to keep in mind. Now, we're just rounding off this top of the crown here on the back of the head as it comes up. There we go. So that's what that's going to be, the back of the head right there. Now, <clears throat> our hands are going to be, our hands are going to be around about inch and three quarter down or so, around about here, top of the hand, the arms are going to come over on each side about like so. And hands will come down. I like this, like she's praying, right? Kind of coming together and those arms will go over. So from this point here up, we need to bring that in, okay? And you can see the overlay, how that's gonna work out because she doesn't need to be sitting like really far out. Her face needs to be sitting back a little bit, right? So that's what we're gonna work on now. So we're gonna come in right about here and just swooping in and out at the top just to bring that front plane back. And how far back do we need to go? Just to be thinking appropriate distances, right? I'm gonna eyeball this. I like so. And you can look at the overlay if you want to, to get a better idea of what you think. I think that's probably a good distance now. Now, we need to have the rest of her come down too. So this hand, the top of it, you know, 
you can do a, a cut right here, like a big stop cut, and then cut down to it. To start taking out a little bit of wood here too as well, just to bring that in a bit. We're not putting a lot of, bringing a lot in there, just a little bit. Nothing crazy. There we go. That seems appropriate. So that's where our hand's going to be. That's the depth they're going to be at. And then, uh, yeah. So on the back here, I'll go ahead and take all this rough stuff out. We don't need that line anymore to keep us in line. So we're going to take all these saw marks off. Now, why do we want to get these saw marks off? Because the saw marks will take paint and stain differently. And if you've watched a couple of videos on the channel, you've heard me say that many times, but I never know which video is someone's first video. So I try to mention it often because they can really mess up your carving and you'll be trying to put finish on and you're like, man, why is it so uneven? What is going on? Why is this coming out terribly? And that's because maybe you didn't take all the saw marks off. If you leave those on there, the difference in the paint and stain is just, it's just terrible. So we want to make sure we get all of them off through the process of carving. One of those big flat areas, it's really easy to just do it with your rough out knife, like I'm doing here, and just knock it out where you don't have it on there. Now, let's talk for a minute about wood grain. Like I said, I never know when it's someone's first video. I started to cut here and you'll notice I stopped. See how the wood grain here is traveling up and down, right? I'm going right now between grains, and because of that, the grain fiber is pulling that knife deeper. I don't want to keep going because I want to lose this big chunk of wood. I'm just going to keep going deeper. I'm going to lose a large corner there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it and come from the other direction because the grain is like little lines, okay? And they're traveling in this area right here, if you can see that. They're coming down this direction, Okay. All those little lines are doing this number here. And as I get between those, they're pulling that knife blade in deeper. And that's going to cause me to lose that corner. And I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to come in the opposite direction. I can smooth that off like so. That's a bit of a, a lesson in wood grain. People keep asking about that. I've explained a couple of videos. But like I said, I never know when it's someone's first video or not. So making sure I go over that periodically because I do videos for newer folks. That's the, uh, the bread and butter of a lot of folks on the channel. And there's a lot of other folks too that are not newer that already know this, but don't mind me telling a newer folk. So uh, I appreciate their patience. They might just be here because they like seeing whatever project I'm doing to get ideas for their own projects. Alrighty, so we got most of that cleaned up here. Yep, yep, yep. A little bit right there to do. Okay. In the front, we can do the same thing. Just sweeping that stuff off. Now I got pencil marks there. I don't want to cut all those off yet because we're still going to use those. And most of that's going to come off through the process of what we're going to carve on the front here. So I'm not too worried about that. So <clears throat> let's worry about putting our face in, okay? We're just going to draw a large upside down U, basically, right like so. And that's where we're going to put our face in. As you can see in the overlay, we're not going to do any details in this face. We're going to leave it plain, right? The Virgin Mary is a religious figure and we want to be respectful. We don't want to try to put too much into her, right? We're, not, we're just going to stylize it a little bit be appropriate and be respectful of the subject matter. So I'm just starting at the top and then I'm going to curve it down. Okay. And I'm going at a straight angle into the front plane of the wood. And I just went way too far. And that's fantastic. That's an accident. Accidents are going to happen, right? I started pulling and through here it was a lot stronger and the wood kind of let go because it went easier and I just kept going down. That's a problem that people have often and you can see I just did it too, right? Mistakes happen. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to work around that. 
and that's okay. Problems like that are going to happen periodically, and you just work around them. They don't ruin carvings. So the angle I'm going in at is kind of straight in on the straight plane, then tilted a little bit to the left, as you can see there, right? And I just followed that around, but straight in. And now we're going to work from the bottom section here all the way up. I'm coming in at about that much of an angle, okay? Right at the top. And then we'll just clip it out, right like so. We do the same thing on this side. And on this side, I'm going to do a pairing cut action to get up underneath there. Be very careful that you don't cut yourself. Right at the top, same way. And then I pivot it around to cut and free that up, like so. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna go at a much sheer angle. I'm gonna do a rounding off the top of the head a little bit right there. If I can. There we go. Okay. Now, the base of the head here, right? We want to put in her chin. Like about so. Like about so, right? To do that, we're going to do some V cuts or some triangle pyramid style cuts. So right in line with that, straight into the carving right here, okay? Now I'm gonna try to make that that point go deep, and I'm trying to come out with the base of the back or uh, so of the rough out knife right here. So I'm gonna angle this in, and let me show you the angle, right? It's right here. So that tip is going in pretty deep, and I'm just barely in at the outer edge there, right? I'm gonna do the same thing right here, going straight up and down. I'm gonna push it in, and so there's that angle. Good look at that, right? And I'm going to do another cut right here along the bottom, angled up, because I want this point to meet at the top where all those other points met. Okay? Right like so, and it pops right out. So there's that triangle cut. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Exact same thing. One big stop cut like so. Another big stop cut like so. And then we're going to cut it right out. Now, here's the thing. On this section here, I could easily slip the knife out of this other side. If my finger's here, I could cut myself. So I'm keeping my fingers down here out of the way at the bottom while I do this and complete that cut. Now, I didn't lose my grip. It didn't slip. And the knife didn't wind up doing what it did here and sliding through that wood really quickly. If it did that, it could have went right through this small section and went out here and someone could have got hurt, namely me. So we're carving on wood, not on people. That's a big rule we always like to have. Just make sure you're thinking about that, right? Where could the knife end up whenever I'm carving? Now I'm just rounding off these edges here. And then we're gonna come up here and I'm gonna use a paring cut with this knife. You can use the detail knife or the rough out knife. I'm taking off those saw marks along the top. Just smoothing them out. That's where you find out how sharp your knife is when you're carving that end grain along the top. If that end grain is not forgiving, it's not easy, and if your knife isn't sharp, really sharp, you're gonna see chatter where it's like clipping through the wood and bouncing a little bit. That just means you need to go back to the strop or the stone if it's uh, if you've chipped your knife. Okay. So we've got a a good start on a face here, right? That's not bad at all. Now we want to bring that angle down more in the front here. So we're going to deepen that up. And then we're going to try to lengthen that angle. Okay. So we're going to deepen on this side. Could we have done that in one cut? We could have. It's much more difficult to do it in one cut. But a lot to take out. So we just did it in two. And then we're going to give her a bit of a chin. Take that off right there. Start to bring that face a bit more shape. 
We're gonna cut the bottom edge of that off right here. Up the cheekbone. Like so. Okay, and that's probably what we're going to do with the Virgin Mary's face. We're not going to do much more than that. We don't need to do much more than that. We just give it that illusion, right, of a face. And uh, we're not, we don't need to put any more form to it because, uh, because, like I said, we want to be respectful of the subject matter. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we need to end these with this hair... Uh, hood that she's got on. So we're going to put an angle in right like so. I'm going to carve right up to it like that. Do the same thing on the other side and try to make sure it's the same angle so we can see the angle over there. We're just going to kind of mirror that and come in straight, right? And then we're going to do a pairing cut, putting the left thumb over here, sorry, right thumb, and then just carve down to it. Like so. See any extra excess wood, you can go ahead and try to clean it up. <clears throat> I'm going to constantly bounce around from carving, cleaning things up sometimes as I see things that need to be cleaned up. So uh, just take that opportunity to do the same thing for your carving. Now your carving may not need to be cleaned up the same way that mine does in the same spots. Let's go ahead and continue this around too while we're talking. We're just going to bring that, uh, that hood line all the way around the carving to the back. But yeah, if I start cleaning things up, take your time. Go ahead and start cleaning things up on your own carving. And yours is not going to have need of cleaning up the same areas as mine. Pay attention to your carving. Let it show you what it needs. The goal of these carvings that we're doing together is not for me to show you every step of the way of what you should be doing. The goal is for you to get to the point where I'm just giving you neat ideas to carve. And maybe you watch me because you like me, but... Uh, you don't have to watch these videos step by step to get what you need to carve. The goal is to grow past me, right? So you can start doing carvings to your heart's content of whatever your mind comes up with. And that is not as difficult as it first sounds. When I first uh, thought about that kind of thing, when I was new at carving, man, that just seemed like a daunting, distant thing. That was a year ago, folks. It was not that long ago, but I've put a lot of practice in since then. So just to go over what I just did, we just did little V cuts all the way around there. Okay. I'm going to clean that up as I go. And then after we did those V cuts, I carved up two there to create a, uh, a more angled plane in the bottom section going up to that hood. So, and that's what we got going on there, right? And that's looking pretty good. We're starting to come along we've got the head shape in i think that hood looks pretty good and we'll clean a little bit more up as we go but uh for right now we're doing pretty good let's take that hard corner off right here and here okay so now we need to start setting in these arms a bit more okay so this is on the the right side of the figure and we're going to come down like so and just bring that around like this and then that sleeve like that will hang down and on this side, the arm will come over like that. And over here, we've got the same thing going on. Like this, and like this. The sleeve will come down, and we'll use this to get the same angle on this side. And of course, you can absolutely just look at that overlay to see what we're looking at, what we're talking about. And that's going to work out fairly well. So get this easier we're going to do just blocking right we're just going to block this in so i'm going to put a nice deep cut right here i'm going to cut up to it and chip that out same thing on this side try to keep it about even when you go to do that rock that knife in there if you need to right just pushing it in is hard but if i push it in and then i rock the carving back and forth it can get a little bit deeper then i cut up to it snip it out to it, snip it out, makes it a little bit easier. And pairing cut that stuff off the back side. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now 
when I do some of this detail work, I'm gonna use a detail knife. You can simply choke up on a rough out knife because a detail knife and a rough out knife, it's the same thing basically. This detail knife is just the tip of that rough out knife. You see that? It's almost the exact same shape. So just that section of this rough out knife, that's a detail knife. <laughs> And if you look at the blade thickness, you'll notice it's pretty close as well. I'm going to use this one so I don't have to choke up on it. I want to show people like what options they have, but you can just use this if you're doing detail work and just hold it like this and do whatever work you need to. So for this detail knife, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to come in straight here and I'm just going to keep it straight with the plane of the wood and curve that line around the bottom. Okay. So coming in straight here and bringing it down. Now I get to this point and I realize, man, to make that curve, it'd be easier to have this maybe in a different direction. So I'm going to come like this, turn it around, and I'm going to come from this direction. And just keeping it straight into the plane of the wood as I curve it around. And I'm being very careful, you know, because I don't want to lose my grip and then have it slide through the wood like it did earlier. Very careful. I got that line drawn. Let's draw this line the same way on the other side top and we can draw straight in start to curve it around let's do it from this direction here rotate your carving as you need to to find the right angle for you where you feel safest and you feel like okay i've got that under control if i do it from this direction so just uh, keep that in mind and then we can just kind of carve up to it if you want to and start chipping things away with that line it's deep enough to give us some kind of form, some kind of shape now. The same thing here to the front. And we're going to carve out that section in there. But first, we're going to do a stop cut across this just to block it out. Don't worry about detail work later. Right now, we just want to get some depth to the arms themselves. That went in a little bit deeper than I wanted to, but that's okay. We'll just adjust and we'll do that at that, at that depth now. Okay. So that's the depth we're gonna go. Let's just turn it around, and pairing cut all of that excess wood out of there. That's pretty close. Pretty close. Move that out right there to the front. Okay. So now we got some depth to our arms. And we're getting a good little pile of wood chips. Now we're going to do with that uh, detail knife. I'm going to put an angle. Okay. I'm coming straight into the carving, angling the knife just like so. And I come straight in and down to the arm. I'm trying to keep it at the same depth, right? So I come straight down to the arm and you can adjust the knife as you need to. But I'm stopping, sorry, at that line right here. I'm stopping at the top of the arm. So I do the same thing on the other side. You come straight in along the top of the hands, in, and then I'm gonna bring it down, angling it down to get it right there in line with the top of that arm. That's going to allow me to come in here on that side and then carve down to it to pull out that chip like so. That's a large chip and that came out relatively easy. I cannot believe that came out so easy. Do not think that you need to carve out that huge chip like I just did on your own the first time. It popped out so easy on mine because that's the way the wood grain was going. Okay, I was not expecting it to come out that easy. I'm going to do the same thing over here. We got that one line in there. I'm just going to carve straight in here. We'll see. Is this one going to pop out that easy too? It did not. So I'm going to do it a little bit at a time. Shave it down. Shave it down. Shave it down. Shave it down. And that's what I had expected to do on the first one. And so see, there's that line right here. We lost control earlier. That's still there, and that's okay. We can fix it. We're going to keep carving. If it disappears, fantastic. If it doesn't, we can still fix it later. 
Okay, so we're making good progress on uh, on Mary here. Now we're gonna go ahead and take out the back part of these arms here, right behind that robe. So kind of carving up to it and following that line around. Rub off that back corner. Same thing on this side. I don't like that angle, so I'm just going to cut that in. Come from this side. Okay. Every now and then I have to pause the video because something happens with the family or the dog or something like that. So you might see everything shift, and that's just what just happened there. All righty. I'm just going to be setting in the top part of these arms now. Coming straight in and down right there, and then do the same thing here at that angle, just to carve that out a little bit more, a little bit deeper. Like so. Okay, do the same thing on this side. Coming in, and then coming in right here. And coming down from that and chipping that out a little bit deeper there. There we go. We have some form to that, right? Now these arms, those are too bent. We need to smooth those out and smooth those around. But before we do that, let's look at this for a moment, right? This could easily be a monk and not the Virgin Mary. So what we have to do here is, while being respectful, of course, is find a way to add a little bit of femininity to the figure without being inappropriate. So on the other one, you can see that I did that by bringing that back into the waist, right? And it making it a little bit wider at the top, small in the midsection, and then wider to the bottom like that, like that gown is flowing outward a bit more, right? And that adds just enough. And you can see on the arms, because these elbows, right, they, the elbows are right here. But we're not going to be blocking around there. That just feels like the, the forearms are bent. So we need to make sure we curve that out like those arms are tucked in up there along the waistline, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring that back in, bring those arms in. And we're going to do that by taking those corners off. We've got all this stuff put in a little bit around the top of the arm and the bottom of the arm to help guide us as we get deeper on where those lines are. I like doing that. Not everybody does it the way that I do. You do it how you do. Your mileage may vary. Rub that out. To reset the top of that arm. And see that uh, smooth us out a little bit, a little bit more. Make this a little bit better. Yeah, much better on the front there. Now let's look at this, right? The backside, where we go? It's just under the elbows, I think, is where we did the first one. So let's put it right here for that waist. And how far up from the bottom is that? That is about an inch and five-eighths or... Yeah, about an inch and five eighths. If you're wondering on there about where it is measurement wise, that's where it is on this block. But you can uh, adjust that as you need to, fairly easy. Okay, so now we're basically doing a V cut here, and then we're going to be elongating it as we go from the top and from the bottom. But first, we're just going to set it in at this height. Put that carving around. And just V-cutting around to give the illusion of a waistline. Coming up to that at a wider angle.
and then we're going to come down to it at that wider angle as well. Now we've got some more depth in there. And so we've started to make that angle right. We're going to curve that in. Bring that back in a little bit too. She doesn't need to have a hunchback. So we're gonna curve that out. Bring that incline in a little bit more there. I'm just gonna keep working on it and bring that angle in. Look at the overlay on the left if you need to to see what exactly we're doing here better. If, uh, if you feel like you're not quite following along, that overlay is a fantastic tool. Gives you an idea of what, because it's hard to do a, a, a blow by blow when you're going for a general curved shape, you know? But this is looking really great. We're going to carve this base, round it out a bit. It started off really blocky, right? We don't want blocky. We want it to be flowing like a robe, like a dress. More appropriate. And that is uh, what we got going on now. I think that's turning out really great, right? And we're going to Still take some out here to lessen that angle. All right, she's not wearing a corset, but there aren't many ways, if we're trying to be as simple as possible, to show femininity better than a waistline. Okay, I think that's looking good, looking appropriate. Not looking inappropriate, looking just right. Smoothing those lines out. Now, we need to do something similar in the front because we need to take out the section underneath the hands here. And we're gonna do that with a cut, the base of the palms. Okay, and it's gonna push in real hard, like so, you see, like that. And the same thing from the other direction. Push in right where the hands meet the robe. Rock it in if I need to, to get it kind of deep, right? right like so. And then I'm gonna come in and do it from the top, right along with that robe and come straight in, all the way down. So you see I come right down to the robe but not quite meeting this flat surface of the robe, but I'm right in line with that. Do the same thing to the other side, right here, right on in like that. Now, there's a couple ways I can do this. Let me try that right in the middle, yeah. So I can start taking out corners like this, right up there, and then do the other corner. That's one way to do this. And then you just work your way down a little bit at a time, okay? You can try to come in sideways and do this. That's a little bit more difficult. One tool that will help you if you have it is a, uh, a skew. And you can use a, a larger flat one or you can use an angled one. And it becomes pretty easy just to push that up in there, that flat blade, turn it around, come from the other direction. And so this is one of those areas where you might not have realized you could be using your skew. 
and how easy it can make things, right? So if you have a skew, definitely utilize it here. But I'm not necessarily going to utilize it. I just want to make sure you saw that was an option, right? Because it can make so much work easier when you've got the right tools for the right job. Like like this, like I was showing you the, uh, the angled one, but this flat one can come in here rather than using a knife to do this. And you can just cut that section. You can smooth that section right there out along the bottom. I can come in up underneath this like that. And look at that, just pop it right out. So you don't have to do this with a knife. You can do this with a flat skew, even a smaller one like this, and then chip it out. And it just makes things a little bit easier if you've got the right tools. So if, somebody, if, you, if you've bought a set and you've got a skew, use it like so, and you'll be quite happy with it. Uh, I just want to make sure I show that kind of thing, what all you can use these tools for. I took a class with Wayne Lair more recently, and what I realized in that class was a lot of what I'm learning from these guys who are better than me at carving is what different ways I can use the same tool that I didn't see that they do. Wayne showed me uh, using a, uh, a gouge like this one right here, like this number eight, right? And he used it for the bottom of Santa's cheek when he came in. So for, for this Santa, for that cheek, he brought this gouge in and that gouge is the angle of the curvature of that cheek. He brought it in and then curved it down like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's how you get that so perfectly around. And it was amazing to me to see how he used a tool in a way I hadn't thought to use the tool. So a lot of what we're learning when we are getting better at wood carving is simply that, how to use a tool in a way we didn't think of to use a tool, right? And having all of these extra tools can really benefit that. So if you're gonna be getting too deep into wood carving, like me, you want to get those extra tools and then learn all the myriad of ways you can use them. Okay, so right here on the arms, I want to start bringing this in a bit towards that waistline too, underneath these robes. So you want to add just a little bit of female form to her. So we do that right here as well. And right in the front, right here. That adds a little bit to her. This is coming out too far right here. So let's bring that in. That's out a bit too far. That's looking better. Looking much better. Take some of these corners off round things out a bit right here very soon we're going to be uh just doing cleanup work on this thing i think we're about to be done on the home stretch now on the hands here right just to go over what i did i'm putting two lines here on the left side and right side where the hands meet the robes and then i'm removing wood from the hands remember the hands are in the robes they're coming out of the robes and so we're going to remove wood from that side they should be sunken in a little bit in comparison to the robes because the arms are in the robes coming out of the robes and then we're going to round that bottom corner off we're going to round off that top we're not going to worry about separating the two hands this is a stylized carving you know we're not putting in a face even so we're not going to have too many features on the skin and all just gonna have it mostly open. And there we go. That's looking a lot better. Round that out a bit right here. <clears throat> Same thing for the bottom of that. <clears throat> Let's see you got a section where it's like really rough, right? Really messed up. Just recut that. Start from the outside. Because you had to do a couple cuts to get in there. Make it one cut now, and then look how much smoother that is. So if you got like a lot of rough cuts, like like right here, right? There's a there's some rough cuts right there. And I want to smooth it out. Just recut it. 
and look how much smoother it is. And then I'll round it out along that back edge. Round it out like so. It could be much, much better. Yeah, there we are. Now I'm just cleaning things up, looking around for areas where I need to smooth out the wood. And that's what I'm doing, just smoothing out different sections. Then we're gonna round off the top of the rope here over that elbow. Now this elbow, we're gonna come down and we're gonna put a little V cut here and then a V cut right in front of that to mimic the folds of a robe, okay? So we're gonna do that same thing over here. We're gonna first round off that X section. Then as we come down from rounding this corner off here, put that first V cut in there. And then the second one, a little bit lower, right like so, which will give a little bit of curvature to that. Curve back of that robe right there. That robe arm. And there we go. Ah, I keep hitting the camera. I need a better option. So, sorry about that. So, that looking pretty good. I think that we could maybe bring it in on the inside of here at more of an angle in. The waist gets in right there. So, I think I want to do that. So, I'm going to go deep in right there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You know, deep in right here, all the way across. Right, so I deepened that line up in there, and then I'm just gonna kinda carve up to it and chip it out. And I do the same thing on the other side, because this side here is hard to get in there because it's a curved back edge of the blade. So I'm gonna do the same thing come this direction here. And then chip it out. And that'll add that uh, curvature up to the waistline on the inside of that section as well. And I'm just gonna look for some hard edges. I don't wanna have hard edges here in the front of her. Not too hard, I wanna soften those features. And I believe that we have a good set of Virgin Marys for our nativity set. I like those. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the money shot. What do you say? All right, hold up, before we do that, before we move past that, let's figure out something here. Because we're going to finish these these ones here in two different ways. One is going to be painted, and one is going to be stained with Danish oil and wax, as I am want to do. But the ones we painted, we want to add a little bit more detail, I think. Maybe to both of them. Let's get out of VTool. And let's add some decorations to this robe. And this here is completely optional. So I'm just going to draw a line about yay high up along the base of the robe. And we're just gonna trace it out with a V-tool to add a little trim to the bottom of a robe. Okay, I did it to both of them. I'm just gonna show you on one of them. So I'm gonna put that one aside. Okay, and this is just a, uh, a number 15 two millimeter V-tool and you can use anything. You don't have to use this one. You can use a bigger one if you want to. You can use whichever style a V tool because I want to show people like you can use big V tools to do little work and then not get the little V tools. You just have to not go in very deep. So if you do get a V tool, you can start with a larger one if you want to and uh, do a lot of the same work with it. You might have done with a smaller one. The big one just gives you bigger options because you can go a lot deeper, but you don't have to. There we go. We got a little decoration there on the bottom of that. Now we can add another line and do the same thing. Like let's say we just, uh, we did another one here. So we got a band of color there. Okay.
It would put up a different color band there. And that would be appropriate. Let's say we paint this one, you know? If you don't have a V-tool, a V-tool, remember, is just putting in a V-notch. You can just do a V-notch all the way around, a little light one, not anything deep, just enough to create a channel like so we can put like a, a little section of different color down here <clears throat> to give her a little decoration to her clothing. In a fun way. So that gives something to it, right? A little bit more texture, a little bit more of something going on. Now you can do the same thing to the to the base of the hood if you wanted to around there. We could do it right here to the uh, to the robe. Like so, let's do that on the robe. Let's do that. I like that idea. So let's do that right there. Now this big V tool would be hard to get up in here. That's why you might not want a big one. It's hard to get in there deep, but you can. No, come down and around like so. Come down and around like so. And up across the top and up in there. And so this is a big V tool. They put two V marks in right there. I can fix those relatively quickly with two quick cuts. And there we go. And you don't have to do it with the V tool. You could just come in like so with the knife, not an issue at all. So we just added a bit more detail to her and uh, I think that's gonna be just fine. So yeah, money shot. Like I said in the beginning, two different finishes. If you want to see how I do that, you're gonna watch a second video on painting where I show how I'm gonna do uh, the blue and I go from a dark blue to a lighter blue along the dress there, it's very light with the top. And the second one is just Danish oil and wax. And I've got a video on how to apply Danish oil and wax, so watch that if you wanna do that. And watch the painting video if you watch the painting video. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad you spent some time with me. And uh, yeah, I think it's a fun figure to carve. I really hope you enjoyed it. Listen, if you liked this video at all, if you enjoyed it at all, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for more. Don't forget to go ahead over to Instagram. Give me a follow there so we can stay in touch and stay up to date on what's going on. Other than that, watch one of these other videos that are popping up on the screen. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.